Hello friends, welcome to Mushkil Ashan. I am Charlotte de Costa, clinical psychologist, National Institute of Behavioral Sciences. Now, if you've seen our past few episodes, you may have seen that we have spoken regarding uh, mobile addiction, gaming addiction, how it affects our attention. Uh, children during this period of lockdown have been uh, experiencing irritability, anger, uh, inattention, hyperactivity, the symptoms of ADHD. Now, these have already been discussed. Today, we are going to discuss how we can overcome inattention or how we can help children who experience inattention, how we are supposed to be dealing with them. First and foremost, we have to make eye contact while speaking to them. Now while speaking to a child, if you are speaking to the child and the child is looking somewhere else and then we are complaining that the child is not paying attention, it is very evident that a child who has inattention problems will definitely not be paying attention while you are speaking to him or her. But if you make sure that before you start speaking, you are establishing eye contact. A lot of attention comes into place just at that moment. Even while speaking, like before you start speaking, you have to take a particular pause. So the child is not only looking at you, but the child is waiting to hear what you have to say. So when the child is more prepared to hear, as well as when the child has full attention or has established eye contact, the possibility of the child paying attention to you is much more than when the child is looking somewhere else or you start speaking without waiting for the child to hear you or look at you. Compared to that, when you're looking at the child and when you're talking slowly, the possibility that the child is paying more attention to you. Now, another thing we have to practice is reflective listening. What is reflective listening? While we give a set of instructions, we consciously as parents should not say, have you understood now? Because these are certain statements that can put the child um, into a stage where the child will start questioning or feel defenseless. Even if the child may or may not have understood, the child most probably will say, yes, we have understood. The possibility of the child saying that, yes, we have understood or uh, yes, we've got it is much more. But there could be a situation where the child may not have understood but says that, Yes, yes, we have understood because you're putting the child into a position where you're actually questioning. Have you? Have you not? So when the threat comes in, the child becomes defensive. How can we overcome that? While speaking to the child, after giving a set of instructions, instead of using words like, have you understood? Instead of that, we could use uh, is there any way I can explain better or can you repeat what I have said? Now, uh, when we use these type of words like, you know, can you say what you have understood or uh, can you help me understand if I've gone wrong anywhere? When we use these words, the child feels at par with us that it's okay, I may have made a mistake or uh, sometimes it is also a kind of reinforcement for the child where the child uh, sometimes gets a chance to say what he or she has understood. Another thing is in, in certain cases, especially during uh, school or classes, it is highly uh, probable that the ch child sometimes starts thinking or daydreaming. Now, we as parents or teachers have to always give possibilities to the child 
rather than accusing the child. When we label daydreaming as bad, the child also realizes that it is bad and uh, still the child is indulging in it. So somewhere down the line, they start believing that they are weak. So we as parents or teachers, the first thing we have to do is explain to the child that daydreaming is not bad. It is a creative process. It helps in problem solving. It's sometimes um, very helpful in um, art, artistic work, painting, drawing. Daydreaming is important. It nurtures our creativity. But in certain occasions, it also pulls us back when we have to submit a task or um, do some work. So, if we teach the child to monitor his or herself, like you keep a particular time when you can or uh, you will be spending a certain amount of time in thinking, in daydreaming, whatever you feel like. If you want to sit and stare at the wall, you go ahead and do that. We have to keep a particular time period or encourage the child to spend a certain amount of time daydreaming. But also keep a particular period of time where the child will be taught just to focus on the task that they have at hand. When they start differentiating that certain tasks that have to be uh, submitted, learnt during that time, they have to concentrate, yet they have uh, some time in their hands where they can just think whatever they feel like without being productive. Because we as parents and teachers sometimes regulate our child into thinking that always they have to indulge in activities that is profitable. They always have to use time in a profitable manner. We as children, when we were children, we have never used the time in such profitable manner. We were happy. So they also have a right to be happy. Now many uh, parents might complain that uh, in today's generation it is a rat race. Everybody is uh, running forward and somewhere down the line if the child is unable to keep up the child is lagging behind but to keep up with the rat race which is thoroughly a hypothetical concept the child is not enjoying oneself the child has full right to spend some time in daydreaming, in thinking, whatever he or she feels like, which can be unproductive. But it's okay. The child needs to nurture the creative aspect. Now, there are also certain exercises that the child can do to improve attention span. One of them is letter cancellation or number cancellation. Now, what is letter cancellation? Letter cancellation is, um, you can take a newspaper, a full newspaper and fold it into half. So, we get this one half. In this one half, you ask the child to choose one letter or two letters, depending upon the age of the child. If the child is below the age of uh, 8 to 9 years, then we encourage the child to, uh, to select any one letter, P or D or B, whatever the child feels like. And if the child is above 9 years, then we encourage the child to, uh, to select two letters. After the child has selected one or two letters, they have to keep a time limit. Uh, you can do that with the help of a stopwatch, where you switch on the stopwatch and then you start cancelling the letters that you have chosen and just see how long does it take for the child to complete that half page like uh, once the newspaper is folded into half I have this one half and I start cancelling A now in that one half 
the number of times the a comes i will cancel it and i will do it as fast as possible now the moment i finish that half page i'm going to stop the watch and keep a note of the time and then write it if we do it consistently or make the child do it consistently uh, for two to three days or more if it if it can be done regularly nothing like it but if children are unable to do it regularly at least once in two days if you're able to practice it the concentration level increases in leaps and bounds another thing that we can practice is uh, object sorting object sorting uh, certain games are also there with object sorting like we place certain uh, objects in the table and we give five minutes for the child to just see or go through the objects that are there and then we remove it we give a, a break of 10 to 15 minutes and then we ask the child to write down or reproduce what were the objects that the child had seen so it could also be uh, established in the form of a game where the child will not only be interested but cognitive retraining can also be done so we are going to end it here if you've liked our show do like subscribe and share see you next week take care